Chicka brown, chicka brown cow. Listeners, thanks for tuning back in to another episode of the Wisco Weekly Podcast. I'm your host, Dennis Wisco, recording live at in Las Vegas at NADA. And sitting with, with me today is Craig Sims, the Vice President of Equifax Automotive Services. Craig, thanks for coming on the podcast. Hey, thanks for having me. So, Craig, personally, I'm going to be selfish here on this podcast here, but I am very curious to hear about how... Um, Equifax, a credit company, credit bureau company, is using data to optimize the customer experience. Sure. Is that too much of a challenging question or are you up for it? No, let's go for it. Okay. So um, you're right. Uh, Credit data like we have at Equifax has long been used to help people um, find their way into a vehicle, right? Most folks are not ready to pay cash for a car. Uh, You got to get a loan. Uh, and and uh, dealers and lenders uh, have for years come to us for uh, credit data to help them make smart credit decisions. Uh, what we're seeing in the market right now, though, is uh, all of the ways that you can use uh, data, not just our credit file, but additional data assets we have, things like income and employment data. We have a bunch of digital marketing data. Uh, we're one of the leaders in that and segmentation and things like that to help uh, lenders and dealers find more customers, get more people into cars, uh, make the process easier for consumers, uh, and um, really help them, you know, get that new car that they want. And, and so for for the customers that initially, because mm-hmm. it starts with the customer, right? Are, are we, I guess, uh, let's, let's kind of set the grand rules here. Is this a customer going on to uh, Equifax to submit their information, or are they submitting their information at the dealership? Uh, well, it, it's not our site, right? So uh, lenders and dealers are using our data. Uh, and so what we have, we have a couple of things. Um, we're demoing here at the show uh, a product called PowerLead, okay. uh, which is a, a widget basically that a dealer can put on his website. Um, it's available through a bunch of the resellers as well uh, that allows consumers to, as they're shopping for a vehicle on their couch, uh, understand their credit score, uh, what kind of rates they're likely to qualify for, um, is share. That, is that, is that, are you bringing then like soft polls then kind of thing? Is it so like somebody clicks on the widget, walk me through yep. how, how that works? Sure. I want to learn more about my credit score um, and how that's going to affect my vehicle purchase. Uh, I enter some information uh, and, and get back from Equifax. Uh, there's a... Uh, uh, and identity verification, right? We want to keep the data secure. Uh, but once we're convinced that you, you know you are who you say you are, uh, we can show you your credit score. Um, we can help you understand what kind of rates people like you would get in the market. Uh, and then you you may, as a consumer, then share that information with the dealer, right? So if I'm shopping, I found a car I like. You find your credit score, okay, this looks pretty good. I think I'll be able to afford that car. Let me share this information with the dealer so that now um, as I show up in the dealership, he knows who I am and, you know, what I'll qualify for and all of those things. Is it, I mean, are you starting to see that our customers opting to share <clears throat> that information to the dealer? They are. Consumers are um, always moving in the direction uh, of uh, trying to complete more and more of that process uh, in their couch so that they don't have to spend the, you know, four and five hours in the dealership that they used to. Um, is there is there a particular demographic of those people that are submitting their information? Um, you know, it's actually pretty broad based. You know, uh, I think people might think it's all it's all the millennials and they just want to, you yeah, know, buy in their car and have Amazon deliver or whatever. But uh, but really, folks, you know, um, we're all busy professionals. We don't have time to go sit in the store for four hours. So if I can do some of that work ahead of time before I get to the store, uh, it makes my life easier. And so what other information you had mentioned digital marketing is also mm-hmm. tied into this mm-hmm. so how how does that information work in terms of how that gets to the dealer and how the dealer is able to use it sure so um, you know dealers do a lot of advertising um, the the amount of money that that is spent you know really starting with the OEM all the way to the dealerships trying to to get you know the customers to buy a particular brand. Once you've decided on the brand to get you into my store as opposed to the one that's you know five miles down the road, um, they uh, they spend a, a ton of money doing that, and the um, the they want those dollars to be spent most effectively, right? And so you want to make sure that you're marketing to the right you know people who have the the uh, income and the lifestyle that match the vehicle you're trying to sell, uh, and all of those kind of things. And so you know. It, pre-screen type marketing, um, invitation to apply for, you know, a new car loan if you're one of the big banks, things like that. They use our data uh, as part of that process. Is that, now, so, you know, is is that Equifax data or are you pulling that from, like, Polk or any of these other, you know, third-party providers kind of thing? Um, we have partnerships with a number of third-party yeah. providers, uh, yeah. but the the we have a large repository of data um, that is... 
it's not consumer level data. It's a it's model data based on a bunch of consumer information uh, that allows us to apply target segments and things like that. It's our data driven marketing uh, group that's available for use in uh, both online and offline, uh, even all the way down to like addressable television, where we can send a specific ad to you, you know, at your house with your set top, your set top box. Uh, so let me back up one, a few steps here. <laughs> Let's talk about you. How did you get <clears throat> involved in Equifax or, or in this line of business? Mm -hmm. Sure. So uh, I spent uh, close to 10 years with uh, one of the largest auto lenders in the country. Uh, it's one of the national banks, uh, top five auto lenders in the country. Are you allowed to disclose who that is? Uh, as far as I know. So yeah, I used to work for Capital One. Okay. <laughs> uh, and we were a... Uh, we were um, a big user of data from Equifax and lots of other vendors, um, and uh, really wanted to, to you know take a chance, move to the other side of the desk, really help uh, help companies like Equifax uh, present themselves well, uh, build solutions that we wanted as auto lenders, uh, and and have had the chance to do that over the last uh, four or five years that I've been at Equifax. Uh, any. I presume you've bought a number of cars. Mm -hmm. Any particular horror stories? Nothing terrible, uh, but you know we mentioned that whole process, the, how painful it can be to be at the dealership. Uh, the last, uh, the last new car I bought, um, we had uh, agreed on the pricing, we had agreed on you know financing, and I knew I was qualified and all of that good stuff. And in theory, all we have to do is you know the car is here now. All we got to do is go pick it up, um, and we were still in the store for two and a half hours. And, you know, and there's no good reason for that mm -hmm. as a consumer, right? Uh, and so, you know, having, uh, having the assets that we have at our disposal to help that process go more quickly um, uh, is really, I think we're, we're going to see some big changes in the consumer experience. Um, you know, I don't think we're going to see that sort of, you know, Amazon type transformation where like all the dealerships are going to disappear, right? Uh, we've still got to get those cars to the consumer. Somebody's got to distribute them. Uh, but what we will see, I think, is a big change in the way consumers buy cars, right? That that the process isn't going to be, I have to go spend an entire Saturday in a dealership to, to walk, to get my new car home, right? Um, and so uh, we have some, some technology that we're uh, also uh, demoing here at the show called InstaTouch okay. that allows you, if you can, if, from your mobile device, if you're filling out an application, uh, on the credit. dealership website, that is, um, or, or where, where's that? It would, it would be it would be tied. Uh, it could be tied to the dealership uh, website. It could be tied to um, the lenders platform. Um, it could even be tied to sort of the dealer tracks and route ones of the world, where uh, you know the platform through which uh, lenders and dealers connect. Uh, but the idea is that um, from your mobile device, you can give me the last four of your social and your zip code. We can then use the information about your phone and uh, that we get through the carrier and our partnerships with the, the wireless carriers to, ident to authenticate you, validate your identity. Uh, then we go to the credit file and ping in all that credit file data that you have to put on your credit app. So your name and address and social and date of birth and uh, we can even bring in income and employment information where it takes... You know, you've you've tried to fill out you know forms. Where you buy something online. You got to type in your name and your address and all that stuff. It's kind of painful it's from already, your phone, yeah, uh -huh. um, and we can do that with essentially nine digits. Uh, what do you see then are the challenges to adoption of, let's say, either the widget or this mm -hmm. uh, Instant Touch? Is that what yep, it is? Yep. Yep. Um, you know, for us, it's uh, it's actually just the sheer volume of players in the industry, right? Um, I mean, there's 40,000 plus dealers in the country. Uh, there are the largest lender uh, in the business has about five percent market share. Um, you know, there's there's just so many touch points in the system that it's really hard. You know, because you got to go one dealership at a time yeah. and one lender at a time. And everybody's systems are slightly different, and it's just it's a uh, it's a it's a big problem to solve. Uh, so, so then let's, Craig, mm -hmm. uh, with the support of the president, chairman of the board of Equifax, Craig is now in charge of the direction of where Equifax Automotive is going over the next two years. Mm -hmm. What is Craig doing? Yep. So, like I said, I think we are laser focused on the customer, on the consumer, and the and the customer experience that we have. Uh, that uh, because I think it, you know it's one of those things. If we can, everybody, the dealer, the OEM, 
uh, the manufacturer. Uh, everybody is focused on the consumer and trying to make that process better for them. And I think as long as we keep our focus there, we'll end up with the you know things like Instant Touch that make the process smoother and easier for everyone. Uh, that make the process more secure. That make sure we're putting people in vehicles they can afford at loan terms that are reasonable. Uh, because that's really what's that's where the win is, right? Is making uh, making it easier and faster. Uh, for people to get into vehicles that they can afford to pay for uh, and can enjoy. And is the, in, in your eyes then, is what is the most important data set that Equifax can provide the dealer? Mm -hmm. uh, and again, that, that simply may be just the, the credit score, but is, you know, is, is it a few different points tied together that paints a picture and there's almost like this, you know, prediction score then, or? Um, you know, it's. Uh, I would say it's it's a combination of the data elements that we bring to to, to bear that helps um, either a lender or a dealer really understand the consumer's financial position, right? So the credit data is obviously important. Uh, you know, credit score is is one measure of that, and you know, sort of your um, your history of repaying credit and, and how well you use credit, and that's one important thing. Um, obviously, when you're trying to put somebody in a in a newer used vehicle, it's really important to know. Um, not only that they've done that in the past, which is sort of what I think about the credit score, mm -hmm. is sort of a, it, it's really based on your past behavior, but you also want to know, uh, do they have a job today? Do they have the income they need to afford that $40,000 car or whatever it is they want to buy? Uh, and, and so, you know, being able to, to bring in different data points like income and employment uh, to assist with the verification uh, of all this information, right, to make sure that, again, that, that we have the, the good picture of the consumer, um, that's what that's what dealers need. Are you able to lend any credence to, especially coming from Capital One, mm -hmm. uh, any credence to our lender starting to tighten up a bit? Um, you know, I've seen, I've seen some, right? And I, and I think you you find um, the larger lenders, um, the lenders that have been in the business a long time, um, have really been buying pretty consistently over the last. Uh, but really, since you know, since coming out of the downturn, maybe uh, last five years, I would say things have actually, for those lenders, been fairly uh, stable. What you saw was again coming out of the downturn when uh, credit losses are incredibly low. We had some uh, sort of new startup type companies uh, that that began to buy very aggressively, mm -hmm. and uh, as those losses began to come in, I think what we saw was some of those folks who realized that the returns were not as good as they were expecting because the losses are a good bit higher because they got so aggressive. And some of those folks will have either shut down or tightened up. But I think if you look at, at some of the, the larger lenders like a Capital One, as an example, um, I think their buying policies have been pretty pretty stable for a while. Oh, that's, that's comforting. I've, I've, uh, I, I've overheard a few stories of how, um, you know, Clients where uh, they have an impeccable credit score uh, were approved easily two years ago, and then all of a sudden they are getting a new car, and then it was a little tougher for them to, mm -hmm. to get approved. And again, it and it's, it, it wasn't just an immediate approval, right? Um, it, I guess to that end too, is there something about? Uh, and again, this might be repetitive, but again, let's just dive into a little deeper. Is there something about the Equifax uh, process that does? Creates a greater sense of comfort and confidence that you know a the lender, the dealer, they don't have to um, uh, collect proof of income, mm -hmm. uh, proof of residence, interview them. Um, you know, just again, so as a way to uh, expedite the customer experience. Mm -hmm. Uh, are there any such uh, processes that Equifax provides to aid in that comfort and confidence? Absolutely. We're the largest provider of income and employment information uh, on an uh, instant basis uh, in the nation. Uh, we have uh, a database that uh, has, uh, I think we're at three or four hundred million records of income and employment. Uh, and so that's obviously one of the most important things I mentioned a minute ago, right? When you're, when you're approving someone for a five or six or seven year loan in some cases, uh, on a fairly expensive asset, you want to make sure. How many people are applying for a seven-year loan? You know, it's not huge, um, but it's becoming material. Uh, yeah. And what yeah. you're what you're finding in the business is rates are so low right now, um, and cars have gotten so expensive. Uh, if you can, you know, if they'll give you seven years for two point nine percent, 
that's actually pretty cheap money and that keeps your payment yeah. in a much more comfortable spot than trying to pay for that same car over five years. Um, what you find is that that's, that's a payment term that's generally accessible only to people with really, really good credit. Um, so they're not uh, using seven year loans in most cases to get people into a car they can't otherwise afford. Mm. Um, it's more of a convenience thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but going back to income and employment, um, you know, that's a, that's a very traditional thing for auto. Um, yep, they're approved, but you got to get copies of pay stubs and do all of that stuff. Uh, and what lenders are finding is they can come to us and get an answer directly from us um, that you can trust because it's a direct payroll feed to Equifax. Uh, it's not, you know, uh, paystub.com where I can go online and, you know, in, inside a minute create a pay stub that says I make a million dollars, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so we have that, you know, verified, um, validated, um, you know, verifiably true information on how much money uh, someone works and how long they've worked there. Uh, and what we find is, you know, when you compare that against what's on the application, uh, folks who tend to inflate their income in order to purchase a car loan tend to be quite a lot riskier than people who tell the truth. Yeah, understood, understood. Uh, last topic I want to touch upon. So um, there's InstaTouch, and what was the one? Power? Power Lead. Power Lead. Mm-hmm. Are, are, are there any other products you're introducing? All right, now, are, we, are, are, these, um, are these new products you're launching at the show, or these are already existing? Um, they are not brand new. They are relatively new, okay. um, uh, and, and but we're you know we're certainly uh, we're seeing a lot of interest in them on the show floor. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, dealers love uh, leads, and and when, what we're essentially doing here is combining sort of a lead gen tool um, with that credit qualification piece that allows again allows the dealer to really understand who these guys are when they walk in the door. So so having come from the dealership world, mm-hmm. uh, instituting widgets. Um, and uh, other products from vendors, it's always the challenge of how, wh- wh- you know, what kind of support am I a dealer going to get mm-hmm. with this? Um, can you share with me how support works for these products? Sure. So, you know, most of our uh, most of our consumption of products like Power Lead actually comes through kind of the reseller channel, the Reynolds and the CDKs and and those folks of the world, uh, who you know they're running a website for an OEM or for a dealership, and uh, and so it's typically supported through that channel, not okay. directly through us. Okay. Uh, but we do have you know just like we do for our credit file, we do have you know customer support that's available and you know eight hundred numbers and all those kind of things. So that uh, and you're speaking of power. Uh, I'm sorry. What is it? Sorry, it's called it's called Power Lead. Power Lead. Okay. Mm-hmm. And you're, so that's specifically about Power Lead, right? right. Or or, or Insta Touch also. Uh, the same as uh, they're both. It's true for both. Yeah. So so essentially, then this this really is like a a pretty um, uh, seamless uh, uh, automated setup that once you know, although it may have the Equifax branding on it, otherwise it's already it, it's it, it's already tied into how that process works. So it's tied into Equifax. There there may be some Equifax branding, but the actually the dealer uh, or or the operator of the website actually controls the look and feel, mm. uh, and so it may be branded as your dealership or it may be branded as your OEM. Uh, there you know, there's typically a powered by Equifax or something like that mm-hmm. kind of a logo, but it's uh, it's actually not our look and feel or our brand. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Craig, is there anything else that I'm missing uh, that you'd like to touch upon? Uh, you know, not that I can think of. But I think we're good. Rebecca's also here. Uh, she wants to. Do you want to say hello? Yeah, sure. Rebecca works as the marketing director for Equifax. Yes. For auto, yeah, for the auto vertical. For, for so, the auto vertical. Yes. Hello. I have a little cold, so. It, it doesn't come through at all. <laughs> um, well, yeah, Rebecca, is, am I missing anything else? No, you know, I think Craig hit on it. I mean, we're all, you know, we're famous for credit file, yep. but we have so much more to offer for um, dealers um, to help know their customers better in order to sell more cars. Yeah. And those are the solutions that really Craig touched on. Power lead, there's Insta Touch, the income um, and verifications, which is nobody can compete with, mm-hmm. um, um, no one. Okay. So, I mean, those are really the solutions, and they and they not only improve the customer experience at the dealership, they increase the efficiency as well, yeah. which is so key now. Again, you know, coming back to that point that Craig made, people don't want to spend you know four hours in the dealership. Well, two and a half hours if you have everything done. I mean, right. that's, that's right. atrocious. And, and average right now is still you know it's still at four hours yeah. average. So mm-hmm. I mean you know so it's really helping dealers really 
look at the consumer and increase things. And we know dealers are harder to adopt things, right? It's no, a little bit of a not. dinosaur. They're, they're very easy. We mean? love dealers, and that's why we want to help them. But, I mean, you know, it's just it's, it's harder to change and, you know, and make a movement. But we're seeing we're seeing um, impact there. Yeah, and certainly, and again, I, I think <clears> for <throat> for the very fact that if if the the data you're able to provide and the fact that it's automated already, right. uh, like, again, equ- you guys have the backing of Equifax already, right. which helps tremendously. Right. So then, all of a sudden, now in the automotive vertical, having this kind of more or less plug and play, right? Yeah, um, I'm sure. I'm sure it's good. Yeah. Uh, how, how many how many dealerships uh, are have adopted um, uh, these? Uh, products so far, approximately. So Instant Touch is relatively new at the vertical. Yep. Um, I'm not sure that we have any dealerships using it yet. We have some lenders that are using it today okay. on their platforms. Um, uh, the Power Lead Suite, um, a lot of that goes through our reseller channel as well. So I don't have detailed numbers on the on the numbers of stores that are using it, but uh, we've got it. In, uh, we've got it actually on. Uh, Hearst Auto uh, is using it, and. Uh, I think we're at six OEMs. So if you go to like Subaru, wow. Subaru.com, yeah. for mm-hmm. example, you'll see uh, you'll see Power Lead uh, there on the Subaru website. Mm-hmm. I think we've got six or seven OEMs live with them. Excellent. Uh, and then we're you know we're making we're making some moves here at the show with some of the big resellers. So. Yeah, we really just started to go direct to um, dealer on Power Lead. Okay. Um, just this year. Okay. All so right. it is something that we're really working on, but we're getting really great traction um, at our booth right now at NADA. Um, we're doing demos of Power Lead. Um, and it's a touch so I mean it's exciting well um, Craig how can people get in touch with you Uh, well certainly you can find us on our website at Mm -hmm. equifax.com and then we're here at the show all week uh, so folks can come see us at the Equifax booth yeah. Rebecca, how can people get in touch um, with you? You can always find me on LinkedIn, Rebecca Kritzman, um, you know, at Equifax. You want to spell and that then, last name there? Sure, it's K-R-I-T-Z-M-A-N. See, it's like K Nobody Ritz-Man. would have gotten that Z. Yeah, I know. Okay, right. And then my Twitter handle is at Kritzman1. Kritzman1, yep. the only one. That's right, the only one. Excellent. <laughs> awesome. Well, Craig, Rebecca, thank you guys for very much uh, being on my show here. Um, I hope that was helpful to all the listeners out there. Uh, as always, please rate, review, and subscribe. You can also follow along on Twitter and Facebook, Wisco Weekly Pod. Uh, we'll be back with another episode of the Wisco Weekly Podcast. Cheers. Pros lachaim kipish nastravi. Salud to the customer experience.